How does the church be the church in a time of global upheaval? As COVID-19 spreads across the globe, so does fear, concern, and opportunity. Allow me to give a word of caution. Let's be honest about fear. Fear is spreading faster than the virus itself. I don't want to shame those who feel fear, but let's look at it closely and let it lead us to the Lord. What are we really afraid of? The loss of a loved one? That's a legitimate cause for prayer. The loss of income? That's a real need to take to the Lord. The loss of our own life? May God free each of us from the tyranny of the fear of death. Are we afraid of another culture, another community, another people group? May we look that one in the eye and ask God to give us a different heart. See, fear has value and fear has a place, but that value is always disrupted when the place is, is given too much priority. Let me say it this way. It is right that we have fear about some things in life, but when fear leads, it usually leads us to negative places. And so my word of caution to us, Alliance family, is while we want to be honest that legitimate fears within our own souls and congregations have a place, let's make sure that that place isn't first, foremost, loudest, and strongest, but that other things accompany that conversation in our congregations and in our own hearts. Things like wisdom, good judgment, faith, hope, trusting in the sovereignty of God. Is God fearful at this moment? <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh, but it's just, uh, if we can get into his heart and understand his view that fear need not win the day or even lead the way. Third, I'd like to bring a word of hope. I know I want to downplay the significance of what is taking place uh, across the globe. There are reasons for concerns and when, you know, national and international health organizations start using words like pandemic, uh, it gets our attention. But friends, this is a moment for the church to be the church. And so, I'm intrigued by what ministry possibilities arise for us as individuals and for us as congregations as we step into this opportunity. See, fear causes us to run away. Hope, faith, confidence in God causes us to wisely step in. What do I mean by that? If your church can't assemble as the large congregation, millions of churches around the world can't do so either. And so gathering as home churches might be a beautiful opportunity for the church to express itself in a different way at this moment in time. For some, this is an opportunity for their uh, live stream uh, kind of ministry to have a greater impact. And for those of you who normally go to church, who now are staying home and watching your service online, use that as an opportunity to invite an unchurched friend to do the same. Hey, you don't usually go to church with me. I'm not going to church either day because none of us can go to church, but would you join me either from your living room or come over to my living room and join our church service. For the unchurched, this might be the opportunity for them to experience what you experience every week, although in a different setting. Churches are finding other ways for the gospel to advance, encouraging their people to make an extra effort to befriend someone, let me just speak frankly, from a Chinese community. While the world's natural response is to fear and avoid, uh, just based on an ethnicity, this is our opportunity to engage to bless, to show extra love and concern and uh, whatever that might look like in, in your community. Offering hope that the gospel is brighter than ever in a moment of darkness, that the church engages, leans in, embraces communities in hardship, uh, that as appropriate to make sure that the people in your town that may be overlooked or feared at this moment in time would be embraced and loved. So rather than fortressing, if you are of able in body and able in spirit, rather than fortressing, would you use this as an opportunity for embracing?
this could be. One more time throughout church history, when the church rises to love, bless, engage, care. Let's rise, church. It's ironic to me that I stand before you today on what is scheduled to be my monthly infusion. <laughs> I am standing here literally with an IV in my arm and a pole at my side as I still have an attack upon my muscular system which must be addressed through this wonderful donation of those of you who've gone to plasma centers and I'm the recipient of a, a byproduct of, of that medication. Uh, I've asked God to fully heal me, to be done with that uh, condition, but at this moment in time, uh, as a friend of mine says, you have not yet been healed, but you are being held. It's more than just a turn of a phrase. It's a reality that when we truly trust in the sovereignty of God, that when we truly trust in His care, that when we truly trust that His plans for us are good, then whether it's an ongoing situation like mine uh, or whether it's a much more significant situation which with you, that you deal with, or whether it's just even the thought, the possibility that COVID-19 might, might come to your town or your home. Can we be people who step forward in faith, hope, and love? And now these three remain, Paul says, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Let's rise, church. Let's love. Caution is in order. Hope is real. And I can't wait to hear the stories that emerge as the church is the church at such a time as this.